Welcome to Engine Adventures. Today, the 2020 Lexus ES. This is the 300 hybrid version. Has that 2.5 liter four cylinder engine that is common in a lot of Toyota vehicles. I believe the RAV4, maybe even the Highlander, I think, has that. Anyway, this thing. Decent size, it's a little bit narrow, as I'll show you here in a second. It's while it's pretty wide, you can see how much it curves up. So, especially on the rear, it looks like the front's a bit wider than the rear, but between this and the kind of well, even the top up here, you're losing like a foot of width, which makes it look really nice and sporty. But the rear seat headroom is it's okay on the outside seats in the middle you're almost touching your head or you are touching your head uh, anyway lexus with that little blue inside lets you know that it is the hybrid i've been impressed with this thing i don't like front wheel drive vehicles i don't take cars very often but i wanted to try this one out and even though it's front wheel drive you don't get any of the harsh bumps out of the front end no clanging or anything this thing is super smooth and i even had a time where i looked down was going well over the speed limit and didn't even recognize it just because it was so quiet and smooth you don't as you speed up the wind noise the road noise doesn't increase that much so and it just cruises really well this one's pretty well equipped not like anything amazing and you'll see there's a few blank switches and stuff but overall it's pretty good let's jump inside take a look around all right so this one does have i'll have to get out the monroney in a minute we'll go over everything but it has the upgraded screen and sound system all that stuff so this screen i actually quite like it it's not a touch screen and that is weird but it's rather large and you control it from the touchpad here and that's kind of i don't know if you can see that like a mouse and then once you get to where the buttons are it has like a hard click so you can navigate through the buttons a little bit easier and you can interestingly enough put up double navigation but audio your driving stuff climate control and then you can have it be the full screen so and there are plenty of i mean you can mess around with that all day find all the different options so i don't know how easy that is to see right there you can see the heads up display <clears throat> and uh, i like it i don't know it makes it so you just don't have to look down here as often and as you change the volume i don't know if you can see that but anyway as you change settings and stuff it'll go through it'll show it up there on that screen um like i said it is the hybrid so you can show different hybrid views whatever that aren't i guess just that one and then your normal tachometer is not a tachometer really i mean it kind of is especially once you get up here in the power that's for sure your gas engine's on and as you're at the top that's you know you're going full throttle with the cvt it's pretty clear i mean the cvt and this keep the engine rpm wherever it is so if you're full throttle your engine's going to be at full rpm basically when you're red line and it'll be all the way up there so the cvt doesn't have shift points i mean there are paddle shifters and I used it mostly for regeneration, um, you know, recharging the battery, whatever, so when I was slowing down. But uh, for the most part, the, <coughs> the CVT, you won't notice it. So there's no hard shift points or anything. I really like, so the this one does have heated and cooled seats. You just hit it once and it goes to auto. And then I'm gonna flip that off because the fan might be too loud, but that goes for both of them. Same with the steering wheel, you can flip it on. It goes to auto or manual. This is the rear window shade right there. So it is power retractable. When you put it in reverse, it goes down. 
Uh, not a bad feature to have. It's nice. Uh, you get a big truck behind you and they haven't adjusted their headlights because they only lifted the front of it. So the headlights are shining right into your windows. You can hit that button and it'll help keep that out. That's the most useful thing for me. I'm sure there's there are times for the rear seat passengers, especially where you need that sun blocked out. This one does have the sunroof. And like I said, it, it's not fully equipped. You can see a bunch of blanks. Uh, that one doesn't have any blanks. So there's three blanks there, but it's very nicely equipped. This thing I've really quite enjoyed. This is kind of weird. So that this is two levels in case it gets too deep, I guess you can do that and have it be a little more shallow. So you don't have to reach all the way down there to get stuff. It does have charging ports, auxiliary input. I'm not sure why that's removable. Probably if you drop something down in that slot, that's a good spot for like a phone, if your phone's small enough or credit card holder. So my phone does fit right in there. It does have this center armrest that opens this way like normal, but it's got a button on the other side and opens the other way too with wireless charging right there. And that works just fine. And then it does take up a bit of your center console though. So that thing's that thick. And there is a 12 volt power outlet underneath it. And then um, underneath that, a little bit more storage. This is all fixed. You can't take that off, but it's a nice place to rest your hand if you're working the system there. Let's grab the window sticker before we jump in the back. Oh, there is one thing here. So this, is the volume knob on the front, but behind it is the tune knob. And I really like that. It makes it super easy to scroll through individual stations and it's right within reach of the driver. So no issues with that. And then of course, you've got everything on the steering wheel for controlling, you know, lane keep assist, your adaptive cruise control, whatever else, it's all on there and your radio controls. Um, let's grab that window sticker. Just need one. Okay. Like I said, base price, 41760 with the total on this one, including destination, 53810 So the upgrades are the blind spot monitoring with rear traffic or rear cross traffic alert and intuitive parking assist with auto braking. And that was $1,000, um, $75 for the wireless charger. The upgraded rims, which I think look real nice, are 770. <clears throat> the heads-up display, $500. LED headlights, $1,500. The rear sunshades, $210. But the big package here, the navigation and Mark Levinson audio with the 12.3-inch color display. Tons of other stuff, the voice control. Lexus Inform and you know the the 12 speakers oh, or is that 17 17 speakers it looks like 1800 watt premium surround sound system all that $2900 uh the the power open and closed trunk 550 I think I would forgo that one but eh, it is nice I guess and the premium package the memory system for the driver's seat outside mirror steering wheel all that stuff and then it also has the Power folding outside mirrors, rain sensing washers, heat, heated and ventilated seats, which I love the ventilated seats. Um, $460 for the heated wooden leather trim steering wheel and the windshield wiper de-icer. And then a fast response interior heater. I think they add an electric uh, heater, which is good on this with it being a hybrid, having the electric heater because uh, you don't have to wait for the engine to heat up. And if you don't need the engine, at first because your battery's full enough you can just use that electric heater to heat it up um it has the uh let's see the illuminated door seals that's an extra 400 the wood trim with ambient lighting is uh, i'm not getting the lighting to come on but anyway there's a little light in there but that wood trim is pretty nice here's the lighted door seals and then let's see the trunk cargo mat, which is actually really nice, but that was 365. 
And the last option, the all oh, let's see, the courtesy de delivery sticker, courtesy delivery sticker. Oh no, the all weather floor liners with the trunk tray. So it does have, I noticed that there's two floor mats in the trunk and thought that was kind of interesting. It has the carpet one and the all weather one. So then, yeah, got charged for both of those. But anyway, 53,810. Uh, at that price, this thing very nicely equipped. I know it is a sedan and I haven't done as many sedans, so maybe that's in the right range. But to, for me, it seems like it's quite nice. Um, the headdress angle forward quite a bit, and that is common in a lot of vehicles. I shouldn't just fault this one vehicle for it, but um, I don't know how to say this carefully. I'll just say more people like to recline now, and having that headdress angle forward makes it so that you know when you're reclined more, the headdress is more straight up, gives you good vision. But if you're sitting upright a little bit more, and you know supporting your back a little bit with the lumbar or whatever it makes it feel like the headrest is pushing your head forward so i'd like to see these be adjustable they are not adjustable forward and back let's climb in the back real quick and take a look at that but so you can't adjust them that angle is what it is and it doesn't slide forward and back there are some vehicles that do but not on this one so that's kind of a pain raising it all the way up like that is a good option it does give you a, a tiny bit more room but still it's not very much um yeah that could be fixed and that, like i said it's not just on this car that's a very common theme for a lot of vehicles today plenty of power outlets out here you got two usbs and a 12 volt um lots of space so that's my driving position and Still have plenty of room, plenty of headroom. See if I can get a little better. There we go. Plenty of headroom there. And if you were taller, I think you'd still have enough. The problem on the side, I could actually almost rest my head there. So maybe that's not a problem, but um, there is the airbag built in somewhere along here for that curtain airbag. Um, but the, the side pillar, that thing's huge and a little bit low. So you could hit your head on that. Maybe you could use it to sleep on on a long drive. Here, center armrest, cup holders, and then a lockable storage that goes into the trunk. We'll go take a look at the trunk. And these are those rubber floor mats, good thick heavy floor mats. I like those quite a bit. Uh, of course, the lighting up here. And the middle one is for when you open the doors. Let's take a look in the trunk. So it is, as we saw on the option list, it's a power trunk. And you just push a button here. And it opens right up. So there's the floor mat. You get the all-weather rubber one. There's also a first aid kit here on the edge. And then... Underneath that is the other floor mat, the carpet one. And then you get the spare tire underneath, well, all the tools. And then the spare tire. So it's kind of interesting to see a spare tire on a nice black gloss rim, but it's not like, I wonder if Lexus, I'll have to look that up, has, a rim that looks like that on one of their vehicles. Probably not on the ES, but as you can see here, those are not the rims we have. Um, it is worth mentioning, these are the Michelin X green tires and they are very energy efficient. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so these things are very energy efficient. As you can see, energy saver all season. And I've been getting about 40 miles to the gallon. So that's the trunk. It's really large. I mean, you could fit quite a bit in there. And it is at the widest part of the body. So you get a lot of space side to side here because the body is so wide. So the only thing we have left is driving impressions, I think. Uh, like I said, overall, it's a, it's a nice car. It's wowed me a little bit because I'm thinking, oh, it's their 
Lexus cheap front wheel out front drive, sorry, front wheel drive car. They do now, I believe, for 2021, they're gonna make it in all wheel drive and it may they may already have that option. Um, so I might be wrong there, but it's definitely available in 2021 as an all wheel drive. All right, so it is uh, running off the electric motor only right now. And then as soon as I get up to a little more speed, it'll switch over. It's actually already engaged the gas engine. It does have the EV button, so you can make that go a little bit longer before it switches. But I, I mean, I never really mess with it. Using the EV mode, you get like a mile of electric driving sometimes. I mean, you don't get a ton and it's, I don't know, it doesn't seem to have much benefit. Maybe if you're trying to be sneaky, but this one does play sounds on the outside so you know that there's an electric car coming as a pedestrian so floor it traction control came on and 60 so it's not super fast by any means but got up to speed pretty easily and still quiet so you can hear we're going 40 miles an hour pretty quiet like I said, as you get going faster and faster, it just stays quiet. It never really gets that noisy inside. So It does have on the heads up display, it will read these speed limit signs. As soon as I pass that sign, it brings up the speed limit. I didn't know if it was just using the GPS to figure those out, but I think it's actually reading those signs with a camera and uh, putting the speed limit up after it figures that out. It does have the three drive modes, sport, normal, and eco. Uh, it's not really a sports car. I just, I mean, it adjusts your throttle response and steering maybe a little bit, but yeah, I didn't really mess around with those. In the eco mode, it definitely feels much less responsive. And I basically just left it in normal mode the whole time. All right, thanks for watching Engine Adventures review of this 2020 Lexus ES 300 Hybrid. Great vehicle overall, really loved it. Enjoyed the smooth and super quiet ride. And I was a little bit surprised at how well it did being front wheel drive. I've been in a lot of front wheel drives. One that I have not is that new Lincoln Continental. It's not really new anymore. It's been out for a few years, but... Um, that one is one that I would love to test and compare to this because this thing was so smooth and quiet at the freeway speeds, at highway speeds, that um, I just want to see how others compare. This is the quietest one I've been in that's front wheel drive. 50 grand, I think it's a, a decent price for what you get out of it, all the options and everything, and uh, 40 miles per gallon for something this size, that's really pretty good. I was just under that. It was like 39 point something. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you uh, liked what you saw, be sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell. If you didn't like what you saw, you can give me a thumbs down. But be sure to comment down below if you give me a thumbs down so I know why. Other than that, have a great day.